From the immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper came stirring tales of the early American frontier, when freedom-loving pioneers were carving a new nation out of an unknown, savage, and untamed wilderness. Stories of those exciting days and of the courage, daring, and devotion of men like Hawkeye, the first of the Long Rifles, and his tribal brother, Chingachgook, the last of the Mohicans. Did you find them? There. Alive, I hope. Two men die. What about the third man? Not look. Come find you first. No doubt, whatever. These are the men we've been looking for. Army payroll messengers. And now, murdered. There's still another man, Lieutenant. I'll be right back. Can you tell me about the men who attacked you? Five, six men, they... Did you ever seen them before? Do you know who they might be? No. One of them, his hand. What about his hand? Burnt. Red scar. Ugly. My brother, Colonel Courtney. Your brother's Colonel Courtney? Tell him. A brutal slaying, but not the first of its kind. Like shadows, the highwaymen vanish as though they'd never been. I've just sent word off to my brother's wife. I'm glad you heard his last words. Half the colonel does something worth digesting. Two acts of violence, each ending in the death of an army payroll messenger, occur on roads leading out from Hudson Point. Have you ever been there? No, sir. The persons guilty of these murders must still be in that vicinity. Perhaps we could find out something. If a man like yourself could establish a legitimate reason for staying there. Me? Well, I'm fit to be tied if I have to stay in the same place for a couple of days. I'd have to turn you down, Colonel. The Hudson Bay Company are establishing a trading post in this very spot. I shall order them to place you in charge. But, Colonel... Will I'll... you do it? For me. I should be most grateful if you would. <laughs> you got me beat, Colonel. No. No. Hunting and trapping, a man has to take the bad with the good. Some seasons you get plenty of furs, other seasons aren't so good. But this is never good for the Indian.
We've been here five days and haven't suspicioned one man yet. Except maybe Jim Foster. Him always want buy rifle. He's bought three rifles already. It takes money to buy rifles. For a man who only works for wages, hauling timber up and down the valley. Hello there. Hello, Jim. Thought you said you were leaving on a delivery haul. No, Mr. Don let me put off me leaving for about a week. I reckon I could be interested in buying another rifle. What you doing, Jim? Collecting rifles for an army? I sell them. That's so? Sure. I was somebody at a farm or tiny hamlet in need of a rifle. And I sell it a profit to me. Get married. Bought me some farmland. Any extra money I could make, I put down a payment. I'll take it. Only I won't have the cash for a couple of days. Oh, I guess the company will trust you. Just sign it right there. Say, Jim, you know who those men are out there? They're surveyors for an outside big land company. Make this place their base. That fella driving is Sam Martin. He's surveyor in charge, and he's no good. Say you want some powder? I didn't say, but may as well now you've suggested it. Kind of a lonely life for a man in this place. Well, there's Brown's Tavern. It's a pretty girl there, I noticed. It's Mr. Brown's daughter, Sally. Fact is, me and Sally are marrying. Some folks turn up their noses on a girl just because her father runs a public place. Oh, I don't. I like people. Trust them. That's good. But don't trust Sam Martin. Well, that's for me to decide. I reckon it is. Well, thanks. See you later. So long, Jim. Well, things are picking up. Jim Foster buying rifles and selling them, he says. Now this Sam Martin. I guess I better get to meet Sam. Take care of the store. Sally, I've been away a week, and I ain't heard you mention you're happy to see me. Sure I am. Uh, don't sound convincing. Try again, Sally. What would you like me to say? Well, all these yarns we've been hearing about highwaymen, it seems like you might have been uh, worried about me. You can take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How about calling on you like before Jim Foster? Hold your temper, boy. If Sam says anything improper, it's up to me, her father. Like I say, I'm grateful to you. But still, I'd like to know uh, why you, a stranger, jumped in to help me. Well, let's just say I don't care for Jim Foster. Got reasons of my own. 
Here's a nice copper kettle. Well, I reckon I didn't act exactly polite to Miss Sally. Fact is, I noted before Jim Foster did. We talked once of Marion. Maybe it's just her way of making you jealous. After all, you're a much more important man than Foster. Surveyor in charge of a crew. Maybe you don't try to see her enough. Well, I get orders from the office in the Capitol and have to obey them. Lots of times, me and the men stay out surveying longer than any of us likes to. Well, the country's got to be surveyed. More folks moving out here to settle. Well, let me say much obliged once again. I'd like to think you're my friend, as I'd like to be yours. No reason why not. Goodbye. That surveying job may be true, all right, but it might be a cover-up for something else he's doing. We not know anything now. No, we don't. But maybe we'll find out who we're after pretty soon. How we learn? We'll catch him in the act. We'll be witnesses. You'll be leaving in the morning to see Colonel Courtney at Fort McKenzie. It's been decided then. We'll go ahead with the plan suggested by Hawkeye. Indian Cove, a wild and secluded place. Lieutenant, you and your five men can hide there. Yes, sir. It's now the fourth. Towards the evening of the ninth, two men of your choosing will appear at Hudson Point, take lodgings for the night. They will let it be known that they're on their way to Fort Adams and to Fort Donaldson with army payroll currency. They will visit the tavern. Talk freely. I understand, sir. How about something to eat? Brown, you say it's dangerous riding these forests carrying so much money. But I say we ain't afraid. We got rifles and we know how to use them. Well, it's your lives. Do you note the way Sam Martin is listening to them army messengers? Jim's serious now. No matter what suspicions you may have, there's nothing you can do. A lot, if I can prove my suspicions. And maybe I can. Are you looking for something? You know what I'm looking for. You tell us. I will. You're the highwayman who've been robbing Sam? and killing all those... This man is out of his head. Let him talk. My brother up at the Capitol wrote me. He seen the both of you when you was there, gambling more money in one night than you earned in a year. No, Swayze, don't shoot him. You heard what this polecat said, Sam. Sure, he thinks we're the highwayman. It's more than think, I know. That's right, Foster, you know. Sure he does, that's why we gotta put an that's end to That's why we gotta convince some people different. Not me, you can't. You don't bother me, Foster. It's the townspeople we're gonna convince. You're not making sense, Sam. It'll make sense if we prove someone else is guilty, won't it? Like uh, Jim Foster, maybe? Me? You can't put this on me, Martin. Not when you're the guilty one. He talks too much, Swayze. Think maybe you can do something about that? I think maybe I can, Sam. Such a nice fella he seemed, too. Gonna be a shock to a lot of people in this town when they find out what he really was. A highwayman and a killer. Martin and his men not here. Notice that. Jim Foster's missing, too. Maybe trap not work? I don't know. The lieutenant and his man are due to leave in the morning. Martin and Foster should turn up somewhere before then. You're whatever law we have around here, aren't you? As head of the trading post, I guess I am. Then you know about those highwaymen, the ones that have been killing and robbing army payloads. The whole town's been talking about that. Why are you asking? Because I found them for you. Caught them red-handed. Are you sure you know what you're talking about, Martin? Well, I can show you easy enough. Just come along with me to Jim Foster's cabin. Look, 
Crown currency, army payroll money. And here's a bunch of government papers. And here's a bag belonging to the army. It's hard to believe that Jim Foster... It's not hard to believe when you see this and this. I told you, I always had doubts about him. And when he came to my room and wanted me to buy some of the land I'd been surveying, me using my name and him to be my secret partner, and he flashes money like this, well, suddenly I got suspicious and came here. Got anything to say for yourself, Jim? It's the first time I've ever seen of it. It's a trick. It's Sam Martin's way of... The first time, sure. You're guilty of those army payroll robberies. Listen, men, when I went to Martin's room... I, I already told him why. So you could offer me some of this money to buy land for you. Don't listen. Don't believe him. It's not what I say that counts. It's this evidence. And it's up to you to take care of this. And Foster. Till you can turn him over to the military. Sam. They're carrying a lot of money. I don't care how much money they're carrying. We just proved Jim Foster guilty and we ain't taking the guilt off him. All right, Sam. No, we sit this one out. Twice a week we go out surveying. Then the big prize will come along and that's the one we're after. All right? Where's Jim Foster? He's locked in the back room. He still tells the same story? Yeah, same story. He says Martin's a guilty man. What you believe? I don't know yet. Did you learn anything? No. Martin not follow messengers. Spoil plan. It sure does. Well, I guess we'll have to turn Foster over to the military. You'll come back. I know it. I'll pray for you. Thank you, Sally. Foster gone. But we not know if they have right man. Not yet, but we will. I want you to take a message to Lieutenant Trellway. Horse is ready. Be ready. Tell the Lieutenant. How long are you going to go on brooding over a man that's liable to get hanging any day now? He never was any good, Sally. And you and I... That's what I like in a woman. Heart. And that... twin bears after a winter's famine. What about venison? Now that's talking. Ain't nothing better tasting in the world than good wild game. Good. What did you find out? They leave early in the morning. You're here, Koi country. They've been mighty free with talk. They're charged with delivering their regular yearly token payments from the government to the Indian chiefs of the Six Nations. It's a young fortune. You all realize that. We'll give them an eight-hour start. They should be well on the Iroquois Trail by then. We can save a lot of country by cutting across Silver Lake. We'll meet them at Diamond Head. <laughs> Thank you. 
after it's over, we'll run our wagon into that canyon there and lose it. And we'll divide the money as we agreed and scatter. Here they come. Every man knows what to do. We're surrounded on each side, so there's no use trying to resist. We want all the money you're carrying. All right, both of you, get down off that wagon, hands raised. How did Foster get here? I thought he was in prison. He took a little holiday to help us catch you red-handed. If things hadn't turned out happy for them, I'd never forgiven myself. Huh. This not good life for us. Too many people. Too crowded. You're right. We'll lock the door, leave the key, and go back to the forest where we belong. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. <laughs> <laughs>